He's not one of us. But most of us look at the people who have knowledge as, well, they can't get no other work. They're fuqara. They don't, they don't know. Now that's, they did that because they didn't have any other skill. Or they're lazy. They just want to you know, talk and get my money. This is the idea that we hear from a lot of people. If he had any intellect, he would be a doctor or a lawyer. This is what some people think. Laysa minna, you ain't one of us. You ain't one of us if you don't know the respect of the elders. If you don't know the rights of those people who have knowledge. This is what the Messenger of Allah said. And that only that, Allah preceded all of that, which said, Ya Yuladina Aminu Allah wa Atiu Rasu wa Uli Amri Minkum. He said, Oh, you who believe. He's he Yahasu. It's a specific. So it's like if you really are believers, Ya Yuladina Aminu, Atiu Allah. Obey Allah and obey His Messenger, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wa uli amri minkum. And those who have been placed over you or who have come over you as leaders, those who are in position to tell you to do something. This is what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is telling us. So discipline is the instant willing obedience to orders, respect for authority, self-reliance. What is self-reliance? Self-reliance is the ability within a person to do something good, to do something in an excellent way. Ali bin Abi Talib, he said, qima tu raju ma ahsana, the, the, the measure or the, the, the qima, the, the worth of a person is what he is able to do well. If you have no skill, you are no benefit. The Prophet Sallallahu said, the best of you are those who are most beneficial to his society. Umar ibn Khattab said he used to look at young people and then when he found out if they didn't have a skill, they would drop from his sight. Meaning he wouldn't look at them as anything because you can't do nothing. But not only that, it's not enough just to do something, you have to do it well. You have to do it in an excellent format. Mediocrity is killing us. I look at the children. A lot of us, I don't know what we're thinking. Can you believe your lying eyes and hear you through your lying ears? Look at our children. I was in Senegal. I was in Egypt. I was in lots of places. I see the children's penmanship when they're like in first and second grade. Beautiful, excellent. I see these fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth graders. Their penmanship is worse than that of a first grader overseas. And you think you're getting a better education here? Is that what you think? Where the child can't even wear his pants right, dragging under his foot. You don't. Inspect your children before they leave the house? Or command your family to do that? What's excellent if you're not taking care of that? Your own seed, your own lineage, what else can you take care of? What else can we expect from you? If you don't care about your own lineage, you just care about yourselves? That's, that's the generation here. The ones that preceded us from the 60s and the 50s. They're all like when they got this so-called freedoms and this justice to so get to you know, go different places and black and white. They just started marrying into marrying, having free sex and all this other stuff. And didn't leave nothing for their children. First generation coming up now is going to be poorer than their grandparents, than their parents. First in American history. Why? Because of this credit card and this everybody caring about myself. Dying in debt, not caring who picks it up. This is the mentality you got. Working and slaving at your jobs. Day in and day out, not spending much time with your children. All they need is some time with you. That's what they need. Because that's what's going to make you die, your money's going to go wasted because you didn't teach the kid nothing. You didn't teach him how to utilize that. He doesn't appreciate it. Why did the appreciation come? Working with you, being with you, talking to you. Some of you can't stand the kids, so don't want to be around them. But if you be around them long, you don't have to talk to them. That'll teach them to shut up. That'll teach them to have some respect. And then after being around them for a little bit of time, you'll begin to like the little guy, or the big guy, or the lazy guy, or whatever it is. And they'll be able to get from you, to pull from you, some of the, the good adab, good manners and etiquettes that we all learned before we got here. Discipline. The instant, willing obedience to orders. Respect for authority, self-reliance. In Allah ya'muru bil adl wal ihsan. Allah says in the Quran, in Allah ya'muru. When Allah orders, this is wujub. This demands obligation. This demands that you have to do this thing. Allah orders us 
He ordered us to be just and he ordered us to do what? Excellence, self-reliance. To be able to do whatever we do in the best way. Ahsan, amal. The best way we do it, the deed. This is what you've been commanded to do. Not only that, Allah's Messenger وسلم, He says, Inna Allah katab al ihsana ala kulli shay. Allah's Messenger said, Allah has written kataba yani maktub, meaning that this thing is from the Sharia. It is in the Sharia, it is legislated that Allah has ordered and legislated excellence in everything. He said, so even if you kill something, then beautify your killing. Do it well. And if you go through slaughtering some animal now, then be excellent. Be the best at slaughtering an animal. What is the point here? Do you think that it just means when you're slaughtering something? And let every one of you sharpen his blade? You think he's just talking about your blade when you're slaughtering something? And let him take, make it easy on the thing he's slaughtering. It ain't talking just about that. It's the same ruling here when you say, Don't say to them, Oof. Don't say, don't say, Psst. I'm showing that if that thing can't be done, nothing bigger than that should be done. If you can't say, Psst. To your mother and father, then you can't say no. Because is less than that. If that's haram, everything above that is haram. Likewise, if you're supposed to even kill him, even if you're killing something, and killing could be lawful or unlawful, you're told to do it well, do it right. Sharpen your blade. Be nice to the animal so it don't see it coming, or whatever you're slaughtering. Then everything else. You have to do in the most excellent fashion. Whatever you do, you sweep the street, you sweep the street like a Muslim. With discipline. That's self-reliance. So everybody said, man, you must be a Muslim. Because only the Muslims sweep the whole street and get all the dirt. Whatever you do, whatever you do, you do it in an excellent way. This is what your Lord has ordered you to do. Have we heard and obeyed? Or are we just going to be lazy McDaisy? Doing it any way we want to. I don't care, I'm an American, I'll do what I want, you can't tell me nothing. Go on with yourself. You're distinguishing yourself. And the believers will distinguish themselves like this or like that. We, the people of the Sunnah, now we here could include or exclude. You decide. We, the people of the Sunnah, when we hear, we obey. Wherever you are, you believe, you fear Allah, you give Allah His respect. You want your rights. Everybody wants their rights. Everybody wants their props, as we say in English. Their respect. You want your props as a little, one human being. It's going to die before 80, 90 years. And you don't want to give Allah his props? The one that's going to kill you? Cause you to die and raise you back up? But many of us are worried about what everybody else is going to say. Someone's going to die just like you. You worried about that. More than you worried about the one that's going to cause all of us to die and raise us up. The one we're going to have to stand before and answer up to. Don't make no sense. It shows a lack of discipline. The instant, willing, obedience to orders. Respect for authority, self-reliance, and teamwork. Whoa. Teamwork. What is that? You would think it was a foreign word amongst the Muslims. People who come together every day to pray together. That's teamwork.